Hi, this is Scott Wyden Givewitz. Today I want to talk to you about what you do or what to do when a client doesn't like the photos that you create. For the past few years, I have been photographing karate photos for a karate instructor, karate school owner, and author. Okay, the, This person has one book previously made, way in the past, and he wanted to make another book to sort of serve as his legacy um, for when he passes. Now, he's a little bit older, um, but he has so much experience, and he's very particular about every aspect of karate. Now, it's not just karate. It's a special, uh, specific type. It's like a little genre of photography. You know how there's Taekwondo versus whatever else. I don't know the specifics. I do understand karate because I used to take karate when I was younger, which is one of the reasons why I was a good photographer for the job. So I knew when to actually click the shutter button and when I needed to move the lens and things like that. But turned out, that after the first session, which I thought would be the only session, he was not happy with the results. When he said that to my face, I sort of felt this tiny, looking up at somebody much greater than me, thinking, what do I do here? What do I do? What do I say to this person to apologize, to make up for the fact that I just wasted an entire day? Actually, it was like three days. Uh, for this session, for his book. What do I do? What do I do to somebody and say, hey, I just used all these memory cards and photographed literally 11,000 photos and you can't use any of them because you're not happy with the photos. So I took a moment to myself and thought, okay, how do I find out why? He's unhappy with the photos. And it turns out that I, when I said to him, you know, tell me what, what are you not happy with and how can we fix this problem? Because I'm prepared to say, let's do another session, no additional charge, and we will make sure the photos are great. That's what any good business person would do. That's what any good photographer would do. And as it turns out, the bad photos had nothing to do with my own effort, my own creativity, my own processing, my own work. The bad photos, the unhappiness that the client was with the photographs was 100% on him. Now, there was that time where I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I did something wrong. And that is what you need to get past because maybe you did not do anything wrong. Maybe it was the client. Now, in my case, it definitely was the client. The client even admitted it was his fault. And here's the reason why. As photographers, we are so picky about everything that we do to our photographs. We want the colors to be one way. We want the cropping to be one way. We want everything to work how we envision it in our creative mind. As an instructor and an author for his type of karate... He is also very picky about every aspect. So when there is a block in the hands like this and there's a thumb that looks like this, really, it should look like this. Let me flip that over. This versus this. It was little things like that he was unhappy with. Now, that's not my fault, as you can imagine. It's not my fault that the uh, person who was in the I was photographing at the time was like this and not like this. That's all about the instruction that he received while the photographs were being done. And it's not my job to do the instruction. Now, it could have been depending on the job it was. But in this case, it was not my job. It was the author's job, the instructor's job. He was the one directing everybody about what to do. So it literally came down to a second try, which turned out also he did not like the, the results because there were still some parts that were not great. However, instead of 
uh, 10,000 photos that were basically not usable. Um, and I did put that in air quotes because um, they were still great photos. They just weren't perfect. Their, uh, half of the second session was actually wound up to be used in the end. The third session was basically making up for all those lost images that were in between the, the second, and third, uh, second and third session. Now, the book's done. Okay, in the end, he was happy. My photo made the cover, and every photo inside of this book, every single photo, there's about 800 photos in the end, about 800 photos in the end, and we probably made about 40,000 photos overall. Now, there were a couple things, adjustments I had to make. I had to change lighting a little bit. I also had to use a Nikon D4 instead of my D810 because the D4 was faster and he wanted specific things he wanted. For example, instead of it being uh, the the students that were posing for this, instead of them literally posing in stances, they were actually sparring and, and doing full katas and whatnot. So it was action. It was live action. I had to get the frame rate from the Nikon D4 in order to capture it exactly how he wanted it. So I have thousands upon thousands of raw photos that I had to cull through and he had to cull through to choose the ones, the, the final 800 to be used in the book. So I shared the story with you because there are times when you might do something wrong with your photographs where you need to address with your client. You might have missed a photograph. I recently photographed a wedding and it was, I was on my own. I don't normally photograph weddings. It was a special circumstance. I was on my own. And the bride wanted a photo of the groom walking down the aisle, the first reaction, and also her walking down the aisle with his first reaction. Now, I'm one person. Yes, I have two cameras. But what am I to do? Am I to stand there like this and photograph without looking through one lens? Or do I maneuver myself, position myself, to try to get it. Now, I did position myself into the perfect spot and I almost got both reactions. There was one issue. The groom's reaction, although I did get it, wound up being a little blurred from motion blur because I was moving too fast for um, getting from position of, of her to a position of him. And um, so one didn't come out as good as what it could have. Now, they weren't unhappy but it is what it is. Um, so if they weren't happy, how would I have addressed it? I don't know. I would have had to th really think about how to reply to it. But that's a situation that for, as photographers, we might have to deal with. Now, typically, if I, if, if I was a full-time working photo wedding photographer, I would make sure I had a second shooter. So I didn't have to put myself into that situation in the beginning. But being that I'm not, uh, a full-time wedding photographer, they knew what they were getting. Uh, they knew that I am one person. We discussed that ahead of time. So the expectation was there that I will do my best to get it. I did not guarantee that I would get it. So I did my best. But unfortunately, sometimes things go wrong. Now, if I was a full-time working photo wedding photographer and I did miss that opportunity and it was brought up by the client, I would have offered a free session of the two of them for their anniversary or something like that. And that probably would have made up for it because that's that could be another $800 session that you would normally charge that is now, um, you know, you're sort of just giving it away. So there's ways to do it. And of course, you apologize, right? You are human and you have to work under certain conditions and sometimes things go wrong. But the key here is when a client says they're unhappy, think about what made them unhappy. Find out, ask them questions, and then create a way to resolve the issue, whether it's offering a free session, whether it's offering a discount, or whether it's actually the client who did something wrong. So think about it and then resolve the issue. Thanks for watching.